wireless mic um, and identify yourself and then call to answer your question. Like Dustin said, uh, we want to thank everyone for coming out today um, uh, to, to our media day for the start of 2019. Uh, as I tell our players, as a coach, this is like Christmas in August for us. This is an opportunity, you know, for us to kind of open up the gifts that we've recruited and the team that we've inherited and, and, and see what we did. And typically you get what you earn. And to me, that's the purpose of this training camp for our players. Uh, number one is to develop chemistry, uh, the type of chemistry that gets us through a season where we know that, that as with, their, with all seasons, you face adversity. And, you know, that's where all of the trust and all the things that we've done um, to develop that chemistry with our players as a staff, we hope to uh, bear the fruits uh, of those labors. Um, we also need to work on, uh, in training camp, to give us an opportunity to continue to develop the habits and behaviors uh, that it takes to be successful. And, and we talk to our team about that a lot. You know, success is predicated on developing the right kind of habits. And, and that's what we want to utilize training camp for to continue uh, to do that. And we're in phase four. Uh, when you look at our program as a totality, the first phase for us is the Turk time period where we do our winter conditioning. Uh, we, when we first came in here, we developed the mentality to finish. Uh, and, and that's what that period is for. That second phase for us is the going to spring practice where we were able to install the base of our offense, defense, and special teams uh, from a schematic standpoint. Um, and then the third phase is summer, our summer program. And I got to uh, thank our strength and conditioning staff. They've done a tremendous job uh, with our players from not just a, a physical standpoint, but also the mindset stuff that, that we do with our players. And we've been able to, uh, to really move the program forward. You know, this is the time of the year in the summer program where the full-time coaches go away. Uh, we get away from uh, – get away from here for a little while to have a vacation and a lot of it's left on our strength and conditioning staff, Ryan Davis and his staff, to continue the move, the movement of uh, moving forward as a team and coming back and having an opportunity yesterday to see the guys welcomed everybody back last night. I was really encouraged by, by, by how the guys looked. I was really encouraged with the enthusiasm and the mindset that they came back with. Um, so I definitely want to give Ryan and his staff uh, a, tr a ton of uh, a ton of kudos for the job they've done this summer. Um, proud of the work that our players put in. Uh, we've, we've created an accountability amongst our players that I think it's necessary in this day and age for you to be the team that you want to be. It starts from within. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust, and we have, with great results and great service. So call the Big Dogs right now. Don't wait. Find us online at BigDogsSmallFirm.com. And as I told our team, you know, we're going to be defined in the present, not by what we've done, but by what we do. And so we're all well aware of the things that have taken place here. But again, we've told our players, this team, this 2019 team, will be defined in the present, meaning whatever it is we do today, that's how we're going to be defined. And we want to use these 25, 26 opportunities uh, during training camp to, again, develop the habits and behaviors we're going to need to have success. Um, so with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Mike, uh, you got three grad transfers that, that came in uh, with, with Tyler and Josh and Shaq. Uh, how significant is it to be able to get those kind of pieces that could help you, and, and what does it mean to you that you have guys that could go pretty much anywhere, have a year, maybe two left, and, and that they chose to, to come here to help you? you know, all three of those guys are, are great additions to, to our program, and not just because they're great players, but you look at a guy like Shaq who comes from a winning pedigree, uh, much like Keandre Jones, who I, I, I forgot to mention, you guys, Keandre did uh, just have his waiver approved last night, so that's breaking news. Um, Keandre will, will have uh, immediate eligibility, but as with Shaq, Tyler, Josh, and even Keandre, who's not a grad transfer, bringing in the caliber of player that they are from, as football players. But the thing that's been really impressive to me is the, the, the off the field things that they bring to the table from a maturity standpoint, uh, the habits and behaviors we talk about, they understand. 
because all four of those guys have come from programs where they've had some success. And so they've been great additions to our program from a leadership standpoint. These aren't guys who've come in with the egos of, hey, I played and won a national championship. As much as, hey, these are the things that we have done and where I've been, these are the habits and behaviors we've had to win and to be successful. And so, again, those were four really big pieces to add, and I think all those guys are, will help us tremendously as we try to move, move the program forward. On a kind of macro level, whether it's culturally or on-field performance, what needs to happen this year for you in order to get the program on the track you want it to be on? Again, and I, and I know it probably sounds like a broken record, for us to move forward and have the success we want to have, it starts with developing the, the daily habits and behaviors. Uh, how you act, how you perform, how you discipline, how you're accountable. Those are the things to me as a coach we can control. Once they get inside those white lines, if they have the right kind of habits, if they have the right kind of behaviors, success typically follows them. Again, this is the blueprint that I've been a part of the last three years, and it works. And, and for me, uh, you know, success will be judged by us in this building, um, and, and it, it can't be done until we're done at, at the end of this season. So we're doing it on a daily basis, and that's where we talk about being defined in the present. I want to be successful today. I want to see us have a great practice, number one. And we're out there today at 2.30 and uh, really start, again, developing and continuing to develop the habits and behaviors we need to be with a successful program. To your right, Dave Preston. Coach, uh, the spotlight often is on the quarterbacks. If you could just address how the quarterback competition is percolating, uh, the things that you're going to be looking for over the next three months from the, or the next three weeks from the candidates and, uh, you know, and maybe highlight what each brings to the table. You know, that's a great question. Um, I, I, number one, the starting quarterback for me starts with the guy that does the best job of taking care of the football um, on the offensive side of the ball. You know, as we say in the coaching profession, you lose more games than you win. So for us, it starts with not beating ourselves on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and the quarterback that does the best job of protecting the football. And then the next most important thing is who makes the players around them better? Who, who gives us the chance to allow all the different weapons we have in our program to be successful on the offensive side of the ball? And, and, and our, the object is to score points. And so, you know, that's a race that we will uh, keep all types of statistics on as we move through practice. And, you know, I'm excited about the competition there. I think competition brings out the best. And I know all those guys uh, are excited about the opportunity to compete. Wayne in the back. Coach, talk about your feelings or what you expect to feel when you walk out of the coach's office and head to the practice field for your first fall as the head coach at the University of Maryland? I mean, it's excitement from the standpoint, like I said, it's a lot like Christmas in August. Uh, we got a lot of great pieces and presence here in our program. And I just really want to see these guys go out and, and, and see where we are. You know, it's always the, the anxiety or the anxiousness of what type of team we're going to be, but it'll be defined by what we do today. And so, you know, those are the types of questions for me. I'm excited about, again, being the being a leader of this family, and, and we've talked about that enough. Now it's time for us to go out and uh, start to develop our team the way we need to develop them for us to have the long-term long -term success we want to have as a program. Dave Ginsburg, Sort of even backing up that question, how did your years at Alabama help you be prepared to become a head coach again. It's uh, it's been a little while, and I'm, I'm sure you're excited about that. But what did you learn at Alabama that will make this uh, a successful run? Yeah, um, you know, I think the structure uh, of how we did how we did things there. You know, as I like to say, success leaves clues. And for me, you know, I spent three years there, and I had an opportunity to see the inner workings of how and why uh, we were able to have the success we had there at Alabama. But there are also some things that I picked up from all the other different places I've been, some of the other head coaches I've worked for. You know, from an offensive standpoint, as I've said before, Ralph Region is a guy that uh, that has probably had the biggest influence on me as we shape, prepare, and, and organize our offensive systems. A lot of that comes from the time I spent uh, under Ralph. So I take a lot from all the guys I've worked for. Obviously, the success we've had uh, at Alabama with the system of how we practice how we structure our practices, how we develop our players on and off the field. Those were all things that I thought played a role in the success there. 
and we've taken a bunch of those things and have implemented them here. And, and, and I like I like thus far uh, the, the dividends we've gotten from them. Uh, Mike, getting back to the quarterbacks, uh, having been here before, uh, a little bit to compare what you've had to work with before. Um, the group you have now, potentially, because you, have, you know obviously you haven't seen a couple of the guys on the field yet. In terms of potential, do you feel that this could be the best group of quarterbacks that you've had to work with? You no know, comparisons are the kiss of death for us, Tom. But I feel this group is a very competitive group. Um, again, three of the guys are guys that haven't played here. We, we all know what Piggy has done and what he's made and done for this program, and he is a competitor. Max has had some opportunities here. Uh, you know, just the, the short term, short time I've had an opportunity to see uh, whether it was Lance or whether it was Josh Jackson, and we know from the spring what Tyler DeSue brings to the table. I'm really encouraged by the position group, but again, you know, we finally now with all the pieces here, we'll get a chance to put them side by side, and, and again, statistically, we're going to keep all the important data that we need to as we go through the competition. And again, the guy that gives us the best chance to win the ball games will be the guy that will run out there August 31st. Uh, we're not in a hurry to figure it out. We'll let it play itself out in the course of our camp. But I, I do know I'm encouraged with all five of those guys and the way they've approached it. And I know they're all excited about the competition. Coach, uh, yeah. to, your, to your left. To your left. Coach, uh, what's a, in a brief summary, what's a Mike Loxley, Scotty Montgomery, offense going to look like? What's the defense going to look like, just in general? Well, I mean, what we did at Alabama is what we're going to run here. I mean, that's the system that I've done. Uh, you know, there were things that I brought to the table there at Alabama, and I've brought some things that I learned there that uh, will, will shape who we are on offense. So, you know, if you're doing a scouting report, you better watch a lot of Alabama film. I think Scotty, much like myself, when I took over as a coordinator, the, the biggest difference is the, the personality of the play caller. And that's where Scotty and I each have our own unique personality of how we call plays. I'll be heavily involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, shaping of our offensive system. I got a tremendous amount of confidence in Scotty as a play caller. He's done it before. Again, he's been a head coach and he understands it. He comes from a great pedigree, uh, working with quarterbacks, having, you know, having a guy like Coach Cutcliffe. Uh, Dave Cutcliffe is his uh, mentor. Um, I, I think it's a, Scotty brings a tremendous amount of experience to the position, but if you want to watch our offense, we'll be very similar to the things we've done, whether it was at Alabama at the time I was here, Maryland prior, Illinois, you'll get a lot of tape out. On the defensive side of the ball, we'll be a 3-4 structure, but also very multiple. Um, I'm not a bend, don't break guy as a personality, and so you know, my charge to John Hope and the staff on the defensive side of the ball is we want to pressure people, we want to be aggressive. Uh, again, like I said, I don't want to be a bend, don't break, but we'll also understand situational football. John has a, a tremendous amount of experience as a coordinator, as a coach, as a coordinator, as well as in the NFL for 16 years. So that side of the ball, I feel pretty confident in. And on the special teams, you know, the Papuchas, Coach JP is going to uh, head up that group. and has done a tremendous job as a special teams guy where special teams has to be a weapon for us and we've got the bodies and the skill set in, in our team or on our team for our special teams units to be really special. Coach, staying with defense, uh, what are you expecting out of Antoine Brooks this year uh, as a leader in the, in, on the defensive side of the ball and uh, what can he bring to the team? Well, anybody that's, that's talked to him knows that that kid brings energy to everything he does, and I don't think he's ever had a bad day. Uh, Antoine is one of those guys that when you talk about the glue of a defense, I think he's so versatile because he's a guy that can play on the back half or back third as a safety, but still physical enough to come down into the box and has the skill set to play man-to-man -man coverage. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that brings a, a big time skill set to the position and gives us a lot of flexibility with him because of his range. But the big thing for him is he's a hitter. He's a, a, a tremendous leader. He's one of those guys that's been voted on our leadership uh, group here as a, from it by his teammates. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for that as, as a senior. I'm looking for the leadership out of him. And he understands uh, what it takes and how you approach it. And I like the way that he's continued to improve from since the time we've been here. 
front row to your left. Uh, I know the online roster has been updated to have you know Sean Savoy as a wide receiver. I know originally you know he played that position at Virginia Tech, and originally you guys were having him move to the defensive side of the ball. Um, can you kind of talk about the decision to you know switch him back to wide receiver? Yeah, you know when you go through spring ball and you lose bodies the last spring, we lost a lot of guys out of the secondary. It's hard to practice uh, when you got. 14 wide receivers and six DBs. And so Sean is a guy that we looked at. And when you want to take a look at guys in the spring is the best time to do it. Um, and I've been at other places where we've done it in the past, where you, you know you use the spring to evaluate the flexibility of a guy playing on both sides of the ball. But and Sean has the ability to feed the skill set, the ball skills to do both. But now that our freshmen have arrived and we've been able to kind of build our depth on the defensive side of the ball, it's enabled us to move him back probably to his more natural position. But I think the meaningful reps that he took in the spring is that if we were to get any injuries or we were to get banged up in the secondary, uh, because of the work he did in the spring on that side of the ball, we wouldn't have any issue of being able to flip him back to the other side of the ball. Going off that question, could you also speak to moving Tosh uh, the opposite direction? Again, and it goes back to depth and uh, position groups and. You know, we have a, a, a number in our heads where we like a certain amount of wide receivers, certain amount of DBs. Todd was another guy that had a skill set where he played on both sides of the ball coming out of high school. We're going to take a look at him as, as a, a secondary defender, corner safety nickel guy uh, this summer. Um, we'll see what it looks like. And he's a guy that if, if he flourishes on that side of the ball, we'll keep him there. If we look like, you know, it's not going to, he's not being successful with the transition there, we can always bring them back. Uh, at the skill positions, a lot of depth and a lot of areas of wide receiver, running back, tight end. How do you uh, try to navigate distributing those touches and making sure every guy, every guy stays involved? Well, right now, we're not even really worried about touches. We're worried about figuring out who deserves those touches. And that's what summer camp's all about. You know, for us, this is where we identify the guys we feel that can be playmakers for us based on what they do today and then do it again the next day and on a consistent basis. And then as we start developing a mindset as a coaching staff, well, this is what this guy's capable of. As we start game planning and getting ready for our first game, then we'll start deciding touches. And to me, I think it's really important, especially on the offensive side of the ball, to be diverse. Um, it enables you to attack all areas of the field with your different skill sets, different personnel groupings, different tempos, which give defenses issues. So um, right now, we're not really worried about touches, we're more trying to identify who those guys are that we want to get those touches to when we start formulating game plans. Coach Cordell Woodland from 105.7. Uh, can you tell me what, the, what you think the biggest challenge is coming from being the king of the SEC at Alabama to Maryland, where you're trying to work your way up in a powerful Big Ten? You know, I don't see a bunch of challenges. I see great opportunities, Cordell. Uh, you know, obviously we're well aware of being in the Big Ten East, and you know, the, that side of the Big Ten is a challenge in itself. But for us as a team, it's a great opportunity. I feel really good about the team. Um, I think we've been able to make strides. Uh, but again, for us, it's going to start just with the basic day-to-day -day habits and behaviors. And you guys will get tired of hearing me say it, but it's what, we, what we're going to be about around here, developing the right kind of habits and behaviors to be successful on the east side of the Big East, or the Big Ten Conference uh, on the eastern side. And, you know, you see so much parity in this league now as well, but, you know, I'm excited about the opportunities more than looking at it as a challenge. Uh, Mike, you talked about being in the present, and I get it, but uh, is, there, is there a way that you can move forward but still pay homage to what happened last year to the fallen hero? Yeah, like I said, we will be defined by what we do now. Um, you know, what we've done in the past doesn't really matter. It's about what we do today, and our, that's always going to be our focus. But moving forward, we move forward the right way, and one of the things that our team has embraced and kind of have taken on is – you know, the way we'll honor Jordan is by how we compete, how we practice, and how we prepare. And that's something that our team has embraced. Uh, obviously, you know, because of what's happened here, we feel like we're in the best shape possible to 
uh, navigate through this, and our team has really come together. And I like the way we move forward, uh, doing it the right way. With Savoy being you know, switched to wide receiver, he and you know Josh Jackson played together at uh, Virginia Tech. How do you see that chemistry, you know, benefiting you know, the team? Well, it'll be interesting. You know, it depends on who our quarterback is, and I think. You know, the key for all of our wide receivers and skill positions are to develop the chemistry with all the quarterbacks until we find uh, who that guy is that will be on the center for. So I think for those two, if, when they do take reps together, there's probably some benefits because they understand and have a, a, a great understanding of each other, where they are, spacing and those things. But, you know, I think all our skill guys need to figure and develop great rapport with all the uh, quarterbacks, and the quarterbacks need to do the same. Thank you very much.